Hey everybody, so just yesterday I made a video about a mother who made the decision to not play pretend with her children. I just said no to them every single time they asked me to play with them for years. And eventually they stopped asking and just went off and played. I'm saying that I established a culture in my house that adults do not play with toys. Adults do not pretend play. I was defensive of her choice and it turned out that many people did not agree with me. The video has an 87% like rate, which may not sound too bad, but the average is like 99%. You know, normally I'm cherished on the internet. And the comments, oh my God, they very emphatically hate my opinion. Sometimes I delete videos like this. This may come as a shock to you, but I generally don't like controversy that much and shit like this is usually not worth the headache. In this case though, I can't do that. And that's because I disagree with all of you just way too much. Like it's ruin my life how much I disagree with you. So with that, let me begin here by talking about the two main reasons people disliked my video. Number one, why is she anti-playing with toys with her children? Why is she acting like everyone should follow this advice because it's the right way to raise kids? Adults don't play with toys? Why not? So on this point, the most common way people disagreed with me by far I kind of think you're just interpreting her incorrectly. Maybe that's my fault. Maybe I should have played more of her videos, but I honestly did not expect to see this comment so many times. Like it never crossed my mind. The reason why this mother doesn't like playing pretend with her children is not some big anti-play stance. She doesn't think there's something wrong with playing, that it's harmful or inappropriate. No, the reason she doesn't do it uh, is because she doesn't want to. She found that if she made her kids play independently of her, established a culture where adults don't play with toys or whatever, she could have more time to herself to do stuff that she wanted to do. We just order some Indian food when they get out of the shower. I'm going to probably get in bed and read a book and eat some Indian food with uh, their dad and they will be expected to just Play. To me, that's the opposite of preachy, the opposite of sanctimony. Not everyone talking about their choices is trying to get you to make those choices, and there's nothing I show in this video to suggest that's what she's trying to do. I think the proper way to interpret her video is, if you love playing with dolls with your children, do it, but you don't have to. You can spend time with them in other ways, and you might enjoy that more. Too, and I guess this is the more important criticism, she's doing harm to her kids. It's important to child development to play imaginatively with your children. She's not doing that, and that sucks. So to be honest, I just don't really buy this. Sure, I agree that spending time with your children, doing things they like is good for them, but I haven't seen any evidence to suggest that parents specifically have to play with toys. As she says, she does crafts with her children. She built a model of the solar system with them. She takes them to museums, bakes with them, walks with them. Her husband sets up science experiments with them. I think a lot of people in my audience seem to believe that developmental child psychology is more sophisticated than it is, that we know more than we do. What I mean is there's no data, no studies I found anyway, that have determined that children whose parents do imaginative play with them are better off than children whose parents do lots of other bonding activities with them, but have them do their imaginative play with each other. This question is just too complicated and particular to easily answer. Like, I looked at this article from the American Academy of Pediatrics, and sure, it says that playing with your kids is good, but it's kind of vague. Some of the best interactions occur during downtime, just talking and preparing meals together and working on a hobby or art project, playing sports together, or being fully immersed in child-centered play. There's no, like, quotas here, no particular directive to do one activity. This other psychologist, Kelly Oriard, says, Some parents will never be the on-the-floor-with-trucks type, and that's okay. Rather than grit your teeth and participate in games you don't enjoy, brainstorm more appealing activities. Maybe it's telling creative stories in the car after school, narrating biographies for stuffed animals, or baking and taking long walks together. And she does some of those things. She does some of those things. And for that reason, I just don't think we should be overly fussy here. If you are an engaged parent who loves her children, who does things with them, who likes their company, I think that's all we could reasonably ask for. As Angeline Lillard, a developmental psychologist says, there are lots of cultures where parent-child play is considered absolutely inappropriate. A parent would never get down on their knees and play with their children. Playing is something that children do, not adults. 
and that's just fine. There's no requirement for playing. Just to add one more thing here, a lot of people in my comments seemed particularly upset at the idea of this mom repeatedly telling her disappointed children, no, I don't want to play with toys, play with each other. And I just want to say that while it's sad for a little kid to be disappointed, this happens and it's always going to happen. When I was a kid, I was like obsessed with Monopoly. There wasn't a day that went by where I didn't want to play the worst game of all time, Monopoly. And while we did play every so often, it certainly was not enough for me. And when my family didn't want to play, I sometimes freaked the fuck out. I threw a tantrum. Children have huge emotions. They take things really seriously and don't have great self-regulation skills yet. So yes, I accept that her choices made her kids sad in the past, but this doesn't just inherently mean they're having a shitty childhood or that they don't feel their mother loves them. We don't know these people. We don't know these kids. And there's no reason to sound the alarm bells here just yet. So there's my responses to the two biggest criticisms I received, but what I want to talk about now is why I care about this. Why I spent like two hours yesterday just thinking about and responding to the negative comments on this video. And here's the reason, I don't like the impact this sort of discourse has on culture. I talked to a few moms yesterday, I contacted the moms in my life, and the resounding opinion they seemed to share was, the reaction people had to this woman's TikTok was crazy, but ultimately predictable. Of course a mother can't talk about something she's not doing with her kids. Mothers are supposed to do everything with their kids. This is the culture we live in, right? Moms are held under microscopes, scrutinized, held to strange and nebulous standards. The general expectation seems to be that mothers should devote their lives wholly to their children and that any defect from that expectation is a sin. If you're pregnant and you drink a sip of coffee, people look at you like you're a freak. If your kid is in school, you're expected to do homework all the time. There are a few articles about this very topic. Moms feeling guilty that they don't like playing with toys, that they find the exercise boring but feel not doing that makes them a bad parent. It's ridiculous and unfair and untenable and I think we should be more empathetic to moms who say to their kids, I don't want to do that, sweetie. It's not the sort of thing I like doing. Play with your brother while I take a little nap. 